Do you love singing English songs, but English is just not your first language and you're having some problems? Please stay tuned if that's the case. I know it firsthand. English is not my native language. I learned it later in life. As a matter of fact, I was really bad in school and I actually failed one year of school partially because of English. You wouldn't believe it nowadays because I actually managed to learn it really well at some point in my life. And that really happened when I started talking every day. But let me just tell you this, every language has its own sounds, okay? So let's say you are a native French person. So French has its own sounds. It does have some similarities to English and there are some things in the language as far as shaping vowels and consonants that is completely different. For example, the R, très bien, like très, that is something that doesn't occur in English. And of course, it's really difficult for English native speakers to make that sound. On the other hand, there is not the rolled R or like the R, like in English with a curled tongue in French. That probably would be one thing that you have to practice. So first of all, identify the actual sounds that are completely different in your language and learn to substitute them with a correct shaping of that vowel or consonant. Also, just a tip I'm gonna give you here, even every consonant has an underlying vowel. For example, in some languages, the K is a little darker than in others. So, like in Russian, the K is really dark, like you would say, Krasiva. You don't say krasiva, krasiva. That's not the way it sounds, like krasiva. Of course, I don't speak perfect Russian, but I noticed that. Like in English and German, the K is about the same. In French also, in Italian, I think k, k. that's placed the same, but you can either underlie k, 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 a more like a O, or you could under have another brighter sound underlying that not voiced even, consonant, but there is a shape in the mouth, like k, 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 k. See how I'm shaping different? And the same goes for sounds where you need your teeth or your tongue. The tongue, for example, in the TH, it can be placed, you know, a lot of people do this wrong, and I see a lot of Germans, they have a hard time because we don't have the English TH in our language at all. So a lot of Germans say, oh, this is very nice because they don't have the TH and they don't have the R and they can't say it. So those would be two things I would tell a German. You gotta work on the th, which means basically stick out your tongue, literally stick out your tongue and bite your tongue while you're exhaling. So really learn those two sounds that you don't know how to make. So let me give you a few more examples. So TH, make it obvious. Don't just do a little TH like, this is so good. The, the, see when you don't really stick your tongue out enough, what happens is that the th is does not the, the it becomes a d instead of a v. And actually, a th can be voiced. So v tickles my tongue, but you practice that. So really, stick out that tongue when you do the th. When I used to watch movies in German that were originally English. They dub over with a voiceover um, artist. And the dubbing over was always really funny. Whenever they said, thank you, and the German word is danke, you may have heard that, I always saw that. Danke, danke. <laughs> it was like, and I always noticed that sticking out of the tongue when they were like, thank you. <laughs> So really watch native speakers, what is really happening, and then really overdo it a little bit just to kind of get the feeling, what is the unique difference in that sound? And then the R, the R is something, there's usually, uh, when you sing, a vowel that is connected with that. So you don't really want to sing better or wider, it's too much, right? So what you go, better, I'm so much better. Now, of course, in every genre, it's a little bit different, but better, it's not so singable. So you gotta neutralize it a little bit. Let me take another example. For example, the L, okay? L, pay attention where the tongue is placed. So the German L 
is further back. It's kind of not really touching the back of your teeth. It's more like, ah, la, 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 la. And it doesn't curl as much as in the English. So what you want to do in English is really curl, oh, 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 curl the tongue while you're kind of pushing it against the back of your teeth. Hello, hello, oh, and it has like a oh, oh. It doesn't really have an open vowel to it. It is more like a oh, oh. So always pay attention to the underlying vowel. So important. If you're Italian, the T is placed differently. Um, and I know also when you're Spanish, the T is placed differently. For Germans, an English T is easy because it's placed at the same, the same way, really. It's like, oh, toll, t t t t that is German. And the English is also t t t oh, today, today, placed the same. However, if you're Italian, or I think Spanish also, it's more like t, t. It's not as explosive, it's softer, and it almost stops the airflow. It's like, aspetta, ta, ta. Da. Oh yeah, in, in, in Italian, the tongue is actually really pressing against those front teeth in the back there. In uh, Spanish, it's a little shorter. Ah, da, 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 da. It's like, I don't know. I can't, don't know any Spanish now, but we used to have a Spanish live-in nanny. And so I heard her speak a lot and I heard the way she sp spoke German. She spoke German with her Spanish way of shaping vowels and consonants. So what you have to learn is pay attention to the minor details of what is the underlying consonant, even in the word k, 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 k. I don't say consonants, but k. Usually, if you, for example, do a k or a t, you kind of want to go toward the shape that's coming up next, like Try. How do I get from the T to the R? Try. And those are kind of processes that you want to go through. There's hard words like world. And the W, of course, is a thing like world. Why? 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 Pay attention to what your tongue does. It's really your lips and then your your tongue also has to connect to that motion. Why? Why? When? Okay. So really pay attention to that. L, M, M, O, P. Every letter in the alphabet or sh. I mean, in German we have the h and the h. That is something that doesn't exist in most other languages, which is hard for everyone else then to do. So really actually go through the alphabet, not only the alphabet, go through, there's the alphabet, and in English there's actually more sounds than in the alphabet, and there is in German too, like the h and the sh, that's more than one letter in the alphabet, of course, like in the English, the sh, the sh, that's two letters, and tons of stuff like that. I hope this lesson helped. Just giving you a few pointers here because I know how frustrating it is when you want to sing English and then you, you just know it doesn't exactly sound right. I suggest speaking it slowly. Speak it slowly and really don't be tongue lazy because it needs to register here. And it's easier to register what is happening when you really go through the full range of the motions. I'm a good example because I've really paid attention to everything. Now, I don't have a lot of accent anymore. Like my German accent, I don't really have like a strong German accent when I speak English. Thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Lots of awesome things to come in 2019. So please stay tuned, subscribe if you have not, and don't forget to hit the bell symbol. Lots of awesome things to come 2019, not only YouTube, there's a few other big things that I'm gonna announce here that are gonna happen outside of YouTube. So have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Always keep a song in your heart and always keep on singing. Bye.